Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh for Yahshua. Praise Yahweh for calling Yahshua out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage, out of the world of sin. Hallelujah. Yahweh bless you. Please get your Bibles, your pencils, and your paper in the name of Yahshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahweh should die, Yahweh should die. Yahweh, we love you, our most high. From age to age, you're still the same. By the power of your name. Yahweh should die, Yahweh should die. Yahweh, we love you, our most high. We will raise and lift you high. Yahweh should die. Through the wind and through the rain, we thank you for what you have brain. We thank you for your only son. Yahshua is the Messiah, is the one we gun. Yahweh should die, Yahweh should die. Yahweh, we love you, our most high. We will raise and lift you high. Yahweh should die. We will raise and lift you high. Yahweh should die. We will raise and lift you high. Yahweh should die. I have a name. You have a name. Father Yahweh has a name. If you love him, why not serve him and call him by his name? I have a name. You have a name. Yahshua HaMashiach has a name. If you love him, why not serve him and call him by his name? I have a name. You have a name. Father Yahweh has a name. If you truly love him, why not worship him and call him by his holy name? I have a name. You have a name. Yahshua came in his father's name. Yahshua, Yahweh. Yahweh Shua, Yahweh Shua is his extended name. Yahweh Shua, Yahweh Shua is his extended name. Yahweh Shua, Yahweh Shua is his extended name. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh for Yahshua. Praise Yahweh for calling Yashara a people named after Yahweh. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Hallelujah. 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 In Numbers chapter 6, verse 4, 22 through 27, is a prayer that Father Yahweh gave for them to share. He says, and Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And I did that wrong. But anyway, greetings to you from congregation of Yahweh. May Yahweh bless you, all those who are seeking him as never before, who are reading the word, who are studying the word, who are proving the word, who are walking upright, keeping the commandments of Yahweh by faith. In Yahweh Shua, Yahshua HaMashiach, we thank Father Yahweh for what he's doing in the lives of his people. We thank him for how he is calling us out of darkness into his marvelous light, how he's waking up the dry bones, hallelujah, how he's healing many people, bringing deliverance, hallelujah, bringing provision, hallelujah, for all those who need it. We thank Father Yahweh for his keeping power, and we thank him for all the things that he's doing. You know, <clears throat> sometimes, some of the words that we have to give, hallelujah, there to make people think about who they are and what are they doing. 
and yet what happens for us in our natural and yet our spiritual lives. We praise Father Yahweh for his goodness, hallelujah, for his mercy, for his mercy does endure forever. We magnify the name of Yahweh. We magnify the name of Yahshua or Yahweh Shua because, hallelujah, they are worthy to be praised, hallelujah, because of them we have our breath, hallelujah, in our nostrils. Hallelujah, we pray that many people have sound minds and health and strength in their bodies. I can still do my jumping jacks. I haven't done them in a while, but listen, my ultimate prayer, hallelujah, is that your body is nice and healthy. And if it's not, pray, 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 and obey. Ask Father Yahweh to heal you, hallelujah, to give you the truth that you need, to give you the stamina that you may continue until the time whenever, listen, whenever. Hallelujah, we praise Father Yahweh for you. Thank you for allowing me into your home. Congregation of Yahweh, 342 Sylvania Avenue, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Drop in and fellowship with us on the seventh day Sabbath. Hallelujah. Friday sunset to Saturday sunset, as man knows it. And we just praise Father Yahweh for his keeping power. Hallelujah. This message is called Friend, Foe, Advocate, Adversary, Enemy, Wicked, or Righteous. You know, and so at some point in time, we all could be in one of these, and yet as we look at the scripture and we see the different things that it says, hallelujah, who it pertains to, we just want to praise Father Yahweh for allowing our eyes to see and our ears to hear and our spirit to receive his truth. Because without the word of Yahweh, we won't even know what to do. If we don't know how to serve him, if we don't know how to walk upright with him, and, and, and keep his commandments. If we don't know what his commandments say, then guess what? That means we don't know him. We can only know our heavenly father as we know him through his word. Hallelujah. A lot of times, listen, I'm hearing a lot of things and sometimes people say and they make something come out of their mouth, but it's not coming from above. It's coming because they are doing it. And so I'm praising Father Yahweh for his goodness, hallelujah. For his mercy, for his mercy does endure forever. So as I said, friend, foe, advocate, adversary, enemy, wicked, righteous. Where are we? We have to know what we are doing and see where we are going and then look up and realize that our redemption, hallelujah, is drawing near. Father Yahweh wants us to be a people, hallelujah who will honor him, who will praise him. And yet as we look at these different words, we have to think about <clears throat> what do these words mean? You know, what, what is a friend? A friend is someone that you feel like most of the time that you can trust. And yet all these words are in the scriptures, some of them many, many, many times. And yet we want some of them to apply to us and some of them used to apply to us maybe and yet we don't want some of them to ever again be connected to us at all because we want to as a people live the life that father always calling us to live and so if you don't know what these words mean i pray you will get out your dictionary and read and see what friend foe advocate adversary enemy wicked and righteous what they mean and are they in your life? Were they in your life? Have they gone away or are they coming? And so we want to be at a place, hallelujah, of living, hallelujah, I wanna say, a righteous life, following the commandments of Father Yahweh by faith in Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahweh Shua, so that we can be at the place Father Yahweh wants us to be. And I'm just going to read the scripture I pray that you will write them down. And my ultimate prayer is that if you hear something that um, convicts your spirit or makes your spirit glad or whatever, that you, by the power of the spirit of Yahweh, by, because of Yahshua and the things that he has done for us, that you will uh, be glad in your spirit. Luke chapter 15 and verse 14. Luke chapter 15 and verse 14. It says, and when, and when he had spent all, 
Mm -mm. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine. Am I in the right scripture? And I may need to put these. Hold on. Anyway, James 2, verse 23. And I'll go back to that one. James, Yaakov, 2, verse 23. I want you to realize, and I pray that you realize if you don't know, that the scriptures were written in the Hebrew tongue. And so even though we speak English, we were taught to speak English instead of, you know, the tongue that our poor parents, great, 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 would have had. Here we are. Anyway, in... James chapter 2, verse 23, this is what we read. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed Yahweh, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of Yahweh. So Abraham, who was the father of many nations, and yet he is our spiritual father, we want to recognize that he was called a friend of Yahweh because he believed Yahweh. And so we want to recognize that if we, um, oh, if we believe, and we want to have faith to believe. There are many things that the scriptures say, and unfortunately many people haven't read most of it, but I'm praying that as time goes on that people will read the scripture and do what needs to be done. It says, it says, you see then how that by works man is justified and not by faith only. So there sometimes there are things that we have to do, and yet we want to be called a friend of Yahweh. We want to be called a friend of Yahweh because Father Yahweh is doing that work in us that needs to be done. And if he's doing that work in us, then we want to be at a place of being called a friend. We don't want to be called some of the other things that we could be that are on a negative side. You know, as we come to see what the scriptures say and see who we are and what we're supposed to do, then we want to be at that place of obeying what Father Yahweh's word says. In Psalm chapter 35 and verse 14. Psalm 35 and verse 14. It's what it says. I be behave myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bow down heavenly as one that mourns for his mother. So in this situation, this is um, uh, a Psalm of David, and he is sharing what he did for those who were not treating him correctly or right. And so he said, he behaved himself as though he had been my friend or brother, and I bowed down heavily as one that mourns for his mother. In other words, he had great concern for this man or person who was to be his friend, but then that person was not treating him. If you read Psalm 35, he wasn't being treated the way he should have been treated or the way he wanted to be treated by this other person. And so he um, behaved himself as though he had been his friend. And yet that other person wasn't being a friend to him. So we want to be friendly, we want to be kind, we want to treat people the way we want to be treated. Well, some people, well, mm. And yet we have to love ourselves because some people don't care how people treat them and so therefore all kinds of things happen. But if we love ourselves and we know how to love one another, then we want to be treated well, and we want other people to treat us well as also. Uh, Proverbs 17, verse 7. Remember, we're talking about friend, foe, advocate, adversary, enemy, wicked, and righteous. Uh, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. And this is what it says. And many of you have probably heard the scripture, and we want to be here. It says, a friend loves at all times, and a brother, a brother is born for adversity, adversity. A friend loves at all times. A friend, a true friend loves at all times. Something could happen, 
But if they really love you, they're going to love you no matter what. And so we want to be a friend. We want to be at that place so that as a friend, we can know how to treat one another with the respect that we are supposed to have. And if we're doing what it says, then um, we'll be treating one another well. We won't be mistreating anyone. Uh, let me see. We want to go to the word foe. You know, if you think about what a foe is, a foe is someone who is against someone, and it's most of the time not one who's treating people the way they're supposed to be treated. And so if we're thinking about those things, then we would, um, as we read these scriptures, then we will truly think about what they're saying. Psalm 27, Psalm 27 and verse True, too. It says, the wick, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. So a foe is one who's not coming to do a person good, and yet when we think about Father Yahweh being our light and our salvation, and we're trusting in him, and we're reverencing him, and our fear, reverence, is for Father Yahweh, then when, our, when the wicked, even our enemies and our foes, come upon us to eat up our flesh, they stumbled and fell. And so that is what will happen if we are walking up right before Father Yahweh. Our, our enemies, our foes, shall stumble and fall. We want to be in an upright state. Acts chapter 2, verse 35. Acts chapter 2, verse 35. Now we're talking about the uh, foe. A foe. A foe is another word for an enemy. And yet I'm looking at the words that are in the scripture and sharing what it does say that will happen for those who are doing some of these things. Acts chapter 2, verse 35. And it says, and I'm going to read, start at verse 34. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he says himself, Yahweh said unto my master, sit you on my right hand until I make your foes your footstool. Your fo Talking about Yahshua. Yahshua sitting on Father Yahweh's um, right hand, and yet... Um, He's going to make his enemies his footstool, his foes his footstool. And so when we're looking at what the scriptures say, we have to realize that many of these things still have to be fulfilled. And yet, as we're looking at the scripture, we want to see what these scriptures say. And yet, we don't want some of these words to be connected to us. Hallelujah. In uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 36, as we're looking at the scripture, I pray that you will write these scriptures down because when we're looking, and I'm, I'm thankful to hear many of the lessons that are coming across because if people can't understand what I'm saying while I'm saying the Hebrew names for our Heavenly Father and His Son, and because we were taught some titles and a different name, I'm praying that people, when they hear a message similar to what I have ministered that people will hear what they need to hear and be able to understand it. And yet, Father, you always taking us up. We got to come up, you know. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 36, it says, And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. A man's foes shall be they of his own household. Listen, you don't want people in your household to be your foe, but sometimes that's the way it is, of your own household. And so we want, to, we want to be a friend. We want to be a friend. And if we are a friend, then we will do those things that are pleasing before Father Yahweh. In verse 34, this is what we read. Uh, 
um, Yahshua says, Think not I am come to send peace on the earth. I am not come to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. And he that loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that takes not his burden and follows after me is not worthy of me. He that finds his life shall lose it, and he that loses his life shall find it. He that receives you receives me. This is Yahshua speaking. And these words are so important. Matthew uh, chapter 10, verse 34 to 42. It says, He that finds his life shall lose it, and he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. He that receives you receives me, and he that receives me receives him that sent me. And he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receives a righteous man in the name of, right, of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Father Yahweh, in the name of Yahshua, I thank you for all that you've done. I'm asking your mercy to plead my cause against those who fight against me. I pray that you will fight against those who are fighting against me. Verse 42, And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water, only in the name of a disciple, truly I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. So we thank Father Yahweh for allowing us to read these words. And as we're reading them, you know, we read words, we do lessons because people need to hear what the word does say so they can make a decision of faith. We're never reading the word against anyone in particular. And yet sometimes, you know, as, as um, many of us have ministered and we've had to say to people, and Sometimes my shoe gets tight too. And yet, as the scripture, some, or as we sometimes say, or people have said, if the shoe fits, wear it. You know, so if, if you know, we all have sinned. I don't care who we are. We all have been a friend, a foe, an advocate, an adversary, an enemy, a righteous, or wicked. Sometimes we didn't mean to be some of those other negative words, but guess what? Sometimes those things happen. And so we have to realize that if we have been in any of those places as toward people, that we have something that we must do. In Psalm 89, um, verse 20 through 34, this is what we read because we're talking about a foe. And so as we look at some of the things that are going on in this world, many things are happening, and yet we want to recognize that as we are trying to make our lives better and walk in a path of righteousness that Father Yahweh wants us to walk, that we do the things that Father Yahweh is telling us to. Psalm 89, verse 20, it says, And I have found David my servant with my holy oil have I anointed him, with whom my hand shall be established. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness affl afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand also in the sea, and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, You are my father, 
and the rock of my salvation. You are my father, Yahweh, and the rock of my salvation. Also, I will make him my firstborn higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor allow my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. And so we have to recognize that as Father Yahweh has given us this word, we want to um, realize that we want to walk upright before Father Yahweh. We don't want to be enemies to Yahweh. We don't want to um, do anything that would displease him. We want to be at the place, hallelujah, that he's calling us to be. And if we're doing that, then listen, it will be a blessing upon our lives. When he calls us to do something, we must be obedient to the call. Um, the next word is advocate. And remember, the words are friend, foe, advocate, adversary, enemy, wicked, and righteous. Where are you? Where are you? Where are we trying to be? Where are we going? What has to be our final state? We want to think about that. So as we're looking at an advocate, we know that as we're looking in our spiritual life, that we have to have an advocate. Um, First John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1. And this is what we read. My little children, these things write I unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yahshua the Messiah, the righteous. And he is the propitiation or the substitution for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now, think about this. Our people, whoops, are scattered all around this world, all over the world. And because of that, then it says, for he is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Because the whole, listen, there's not one person on this earth who had not sinned, not one, not one, not one. And because of that, all around the world, sin has to be forgiven, and those who are going to the kingdom must be cleansed of sin, and yet we have to recognize that we needed an advocate, and our advocate is Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahshua the Messiah. If you didn't hear the last message, the scripture, all the scriptures, were written in the Hebrew tongue, then translated into the Greek. We want to go back to the Hebrew and do the work of studying, proving all things, searching the scripture, and obeying what thus saith Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Because the time is coming and now is when we must know what we must do. Isaiah chapter 53. Verse 12, when you really think about some of the things that the scriptures say, until people, mm -mm. oh, I say it. If we really think about some of the things that the scriptures say, we want to be at the place Father Yahweh is telling us to be. Isaiah 53 and verse 12, it says, Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he had poured out his life unto death. He, and he was numbered with the transgressors and bare the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. So Yahshua, and I've shared this on many of my messages, because Yahshua 
died on a tree at Golgotha before he died while they, he was hanging there. And they had whipped him, they had pulled his beard, they did so many things to him. But while he was there, he became the substitute for us. Because he died on a tree at Golgotha, those who believe in him, those who believe that Father Yahweh sent him into the world to represent Father Yahweh and yet to save us from our sins, then if we truly believe on him and we repent of our sin, confess our sin, turn from every wicked way, then Yahshua, if we keep the commandments that Father Yahweh has given, then Yahshua becomes our advocate. He becomes our substitute. And because he died on the tree and yet was buried and he rose again, then the three nights and three days and three nights later, then we have an advocate. And so if our faith is truly in him, and we do all that we are supposed to do, then we shall, hallelujah, be raised from death if we die, if we die in Yahshua, believing in him, or those who remain alive at his coming shall be changed from life, death, right back to life, because we're all going to die one time, because it's appointed unto man to die, and then the judgment. So we want to be judged as righteous. We want to be at the throne of grace, hallelujah, the throne of grace. And we want to be judged as righteous to be able to be in that marriage supper, hallelujah, with Yahshua HaMashiach. And if we're there, then guess what? We'll be there. I have many scriptures to read, and I may not be able to read them all, but I'm going to read as many as I can. We want to go now <clears throat> to Romans chapter 8 verse 26 and when we're really looking at the scripture and we see what it does say we have to read it and then you can study it you can't read it and see all that it says and and understand the scripture in romans 8 verse 26 this is what it says likewise the spirit also helps our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Sometimes we're going through a situation we don't really know what to do. But I can guarantee you, because if we re truly, truly received, and I have, received the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, indwelling us, then when we're going through something and we're not, look, sometimes they say, don't pray for them. And sometimes it'll say, pray, pray. The scripture says, pray without ceasing. But sometimes you don't know what to pray. And so the Spirit will make groaning that you don't even know what it's saying. And yet, on intercession for someone or situation or, or something that you have to go through, and the Spirit makes that intercession. So we have to realize that there are many things that are going on, and yet we want and have to realize that the Spirit becomes an advocate for us. Yahshua is our advocate. Yahshua makes intercession for us. And as he has made intercession for us, we want to be at the place that Father Yahweh wants us to be. In Romans chapter 11, verse 2, it says, Yahweh has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Did you not know um, what the scripture says of Eliah? How he makes intercession to Yahweh against Yashua, Israel, saying, Yahweh, they have killed your prophets and dig down your altars, and I am left alone and they seek my life. He thought he was the only one. Hallelujah. But what says the answer of Yahweh unto him? He says, I have served, reserved rather, to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Baal means Lord. And yet many people had bowed down to Baal. And yet he, Father Yahweh had to show Eliah he wasn't the only one. 
There were many who were reverencing Father Yahweh with all their mind, their body, their spirit, with their whole life. It says, even so then, at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Hallelujah. There is a remnant. There is a remnant today who are serving Father Yahweh with their mind, their body, their spirit, with their whole life. They are striving to do all that they are supposed to do. And all we can do is realize that there is an election of grace, but there is a remnant. And yet because of that, you know, even though um, um, Eliah made uh, intercession against Yashua, y'all, we had to show him. Look, you can't pray that prayer for everyone because there are some people who are serving me. And so because of that, we want to recognize that we want to be an advocate. We want to pray for people. And if they're not knowing how to worship Father Yahweh, if you have opportunity, you want to show them what the word does say. And then as you continue to read with a sincere heart and you continue to teach with a sincere heart, Father Yahweh will open up our, everybody's understanding for us to get into his kingdom we truly have to know what it is that he wants us to do. And if we truly are coming to the fact of realizing that the scriptures were all written in the Hebrew tongue, then hallelujah, we will be at the place where Father Yahweh wants us to be. Hebrews chapter 7, verse, um, I want to start at 21. This is what it says, because sometimes you have to think about what happened in Torah and in the prophets. So many people are only studying Matthew to Revelation or Matthew to somewhere, and yet until they really read the scripture, they have no real idea what happened in, in uh, olden times. It says, for the priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath, talking about Yahshua, by him, but this with an oath and said unto him, Yahweh swore, and will not relent. You are a priest after, forever after the order of Melchizedek. That's talking about Yahshua. You know, when Abraham um, paid a tithe to Melchizedek, it's representative of Yahshua. And yet he told him that he's a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. It says, by so much was Yahshua made a surety of a better covenant. A better covenant. You know, in the old covenant, they were doing animal sacrifices. But we cannot be saved by the blood of bulls and goats and rams and all those kind of things. It takes the blood of one made in the flesh just like us, but yet one who never committed a sin. And because Yahshua never committed a sin, he is our advocate. It says, and they truly were many priests because they were not allowed to continue by reason of death. Listen, the priests all died off. They all died off. And yet, we, when we're looking at the things that are coming, then we have to realize that Yahshua's priesthood continues. It says, but this man, because he continues forever or ever, has an unchangeable priesthood. So Yahshua, after the order of Melchizedek, is not only just a priest, but he is our high priest. And so when we recognize that he is an advocate for those who believe that Father Yahweh sent him, to those who believe that Yahshua died, was buried, and rose again according to the scripture. And if we are at that place, hallelujah, then he is an advocate for us. He's making intercession on our behalf. It says, wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto Yahweh by him, seeing he lives, he ever lives to make intercession for them. For such a priest, for such a high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, and separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens. So when we're looking at the scripture, we have to realize that Yahshua 
is an advocate. He is our high priest. He's making intercession for us. And because he's making intercession for us, then if we truly, truly, truly believe and follow what the commands that Father Yahweh's word gives, listen, his advocacy for us will prove us and allow us to be in the kingdom, in that marriage supper, and come down onto the earth that is made clean, hallelujah, by that fire. Hallelujah. We praise Father Yahweh. Um, let's see. Adversary. Now, when we're looking at an adversary, we have to recognize that in this world, there are many adversaries, and yet we want to be at a place of not being an adversary. Because if we are an adversary, oh, some things will happen that we don't want to happen. In um, Exodus chapter 23 and verse 22, this is what it says. It says, but if you shall indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto your enemies and an adversary unto your adversaries. You know, Father Yahweh fights on behalf of his people and especially if we will obey his voice. And yet if we're not obeying his voice, oh, then he will be an enemy to us and an adversary to us. But he says, but if you shall indeed, who's he talking about? He said he was gonna send an angel before our foreparents, when they came out of the land of Egypt and were walking through the wilderness, he said he would send an angel before them. He always leads and guides and directs us as to where he wants us to go, how he wants us to go, what we need to hear, what he wants us to say. And so he was sending an angel before our foreparents to guide them. And he said, but if you shall... Indeed, and that was talking about Yahweh Shua, if you shall indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto your enemies and an adversary unto your adversaries. For my angels shall go before you and bring you in unto the Amorites. He, this is before they went into the promised land. And so we're looking to go into the promised land even right now. And yet, we have to be obedient, hallelujah, to the commandments that Father Yahweh has given. We don't want him to be an adversary to us. We want him to be an advocate. We want to be a friend of Father Yahweh's because we do those things that he tells us to do. So as we continue to look at the scripture, we have to realize that as he is giving us the word, that he will bring us to the place that we need to be and allow us to um, be in right relationship with him. In Psalm 71, we want to go to verse 13 because we're looking at the word adversary. An adversary is someone who fights against someone and they really should not necessarily be fighting them. But anyway, verse 13, it says, let them be confounded and consumed that are the adversaries to my life. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor that seek my hurt, but I will hope continually and will yet praise you more and more. My mouth shall show forth your righteousness and your salvation, or your Yahshua, all the day. For I know not the numbers thereof. When we really think about the scripture, he says, I will go in the strength of Yahweh. I will make mention of your righteousness, even of yours only. Father Yahweh is righteous. He wants us to walk up right before him. He wants us to do the thing that we're supposed to do. And yet if, he's, if we're doing what he wants us to, he fights our adversaries. And so we don't want to be an adversary. We don't ever, ever, ever want to be an adversary because if we're being an adversary, that's not a good thing. And so we have to recognize that as we're doing the things that Father Yahweh has told us to do, um, then he will help us be what we need to be. The next word, uh, next scripture, we want to go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 27. 
Hebrews chapter 10 and verse, we're going to start at verse 26. When we're looking at the scripture, there are so many things that we can talk about, and yet we want to use them for the purposes of finding out how to walk upright before Yahweh. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, this is what it says. For if we willfully sin after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. So if someone's an adversary, you know, after they have found out the truth and walked in it, oops. It says, he that despised Moshe, Moshe's law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much more sore punishment suppose you shall he um, be thought worthy who shall trodden um, underfoot the son of Yahweh and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sacrificed, sanctified, an unholy thing, and have done despite unto the spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongs unto me. I will recompense, saith Yahweh. And again, Yahweh shall judge his people. So Father Yahweh is the one, through Yahshua, who's going to judge us, and yet we want to be at the place that we need to be. It says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living Yahweh. Yahweh lives forever. Yahweh never died. Yahweh can't die. And Yahweh won't die. And so as we're continuing to look at the scripture, um, we don't want to be an enemy to Yahweh because he will be an enemy to those who are being an enemy. In Judges, um, I've got a few more minutes while you can see me. I'm going to read over the graphics, and my ultimate prayer is that you are writing down these scriptures, and even if you're not writing it, my ultimate prayer is that you're reading the scriptures, seeing what the word does say, making a decision of faith to follow, to follow Yahweh's word, and to realize that we need to know his commandments and how to walk in them and what to do and know who Father Yahweh is, who, who Yahshua is, and um, just be obedient. Judges chapter 5 and verse 31. It says, So let all your enemies perish, O Yahweh. Let them that love him be as the sun when he go, goes forth into, in his might, and the land shall have rest, had rest for 40 years. And so sometimes there are things that are going on. It's, but he's saying, let all your enemies perish. You know, we have to recognize anyone who remains an enemy to Father Yahweh is going to perish. We want people to be saved, and yet we know Father Yahweh has to draw. People have to seek Yahweh as never before. Draw toward Father Yahweh, and Yahweh will draw to them. And yet if that's not happening, then uh, we have to realize that people would be in a place that um, is not going to allow them to enter into Father Yahweh's kingdom. In Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 19, Isaiah 59 and 19, we're talking about the enemy. It says, so shall they fear the name of Yahweh from the west and the glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of Yahweh shall put him um, lift up a standard against him and put him to flight. You know, so when the enemy comes, the spirit of Yahweh causes that enemy to go away and not to be able to do some of the things that are in their mind to do. In um, James chapter 4, you know, all through the scriptures, we see different words and it tells us what Father Yahweh's word says. It says in um, uh, James chapter 4 and verse 4, 
This is what we read. It says, you adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with Yahweh. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of Yahweh. So we don't want to be enemies. I mean, we don't want to be have friendship with the world because then that would mean that we are loving the world more than we're loving Yahweh. We want to love Father Yahweh and uh, put the world behind us. You know, we can't, we can't love the world. We have to be at a point of seeing what Father Yahweh's word says to us and then doing the things that he's telling us to do. In Galatians chapter 4, Galatians chapter 4, and verse 16. <clears throat> this is what we read. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 16. It says, And I therefore became, be, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth. You know, sometimes people say, well, How do you do all this? If you love Father Yahweh, you don't worry about other people. And yet, because we share Yahweh's word until people get to that point and the level that they can hear and receive Yahweh's truth and see it because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Yahweh. And so we're saved by name. We're saved Yahweh Shua. Yahweh said, I Yahweh am your savior. And yet because Yahweh is spirit, total spirit, total spirit, then we had to have one who came in the flesh. And yet as we're sharing Yahweh's word, many people become an enemy to us because of what we speak, because they have not uh, studied enough or received the Ruach so that they can be at the point of realizing that the things that we're sharing are correct. And so, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? I pray not because if, if someone is an enemy to me, then that means they're an enemy to Father Yahweh. We don't want to be an enemy to Father Yahweh because he gives us our breath every day. And yet, as we're looking at these words, friend, foe, advocate, adversary, enemy, wicked, and righteous. I'm going to skip <laughs> the wicked, and I'm going straight on down to righteous because we want to live a righteous life. We want to be at the place Father Yahweh wants us to be, and if we are there, then we will, listen, we'll be blessed. Psalm 37, Psalm 37 and verse 16, and this is what it says. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. You know, a lot of people have a lot of wealth and a lot of wealth, but they are so wicked. And so even when, you know, sometimes we're able to do some things because we didn't have a whole lot. And yet we learn how to love one another. We learn how to share with other people. We learn how to just stand upright for the things that Father Yahweh has, has had but just because we strive to live a righteous life. And so we want to do the things that Father Yahweh is calling us to do. And if we're doing that, then there is a blessing for us. Verse 25 says of that same psalm, it says, I have been young and now I am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. And so as we continue, there's a lot of things in the book of Psalms and all through the scripture it talks about the righteous. Verse 29, it says, The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The one scripture says, But the wicked shall be taken out of the land. And so we want to live that righteous life. In a few minutes, about 30 seconds, you won't see me, but you'll hear my voice. So I thank you for allowing me into your home. I thank the staff here at PCTV for helping me with these messages, and I'm thankful for all the things that we are hearing. And yet I want people to really understand that there are people who are destined to judgment um, of death. There's nothing that they can even do. In Romans chapter 9, verse 22, it says, and I'm going to start at verse 21. It says, had not the potter power over the clay of some lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. 
What if Yahweh, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? So sometimes he allows people to just do what they're going to do because they are not going into the kingdom. They're going to be destroyed. But we pray that everyone will repent and do the things that Father Yahweh wants to do, that people will reverence the name of Yahweh, that they will love Yahweh with their mind, their body, and their spirit, that they will love their neighbors, they love themselves, that they will obey Yahweh rather than man, that they will serve Yahweh, hallelujah, with gladness. And yet we pray that many people will gain a spiritual discernment to see the things that Father Yahweh's word says, and yet we want to be at the place of seeing Father Yahweh's word and understanding what he's saying to us. In Psalm 45 and verse 7, Psalm 45 and verse 7, this is what we read. Psalm 45 and verse 7. A lot of scripture, and yet they're doable. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, Yahweh, your Father, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Are your garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory places whereby they have made you glad? We have to realize that, you know, Yahshua died for us. Yahshua is coming back again. Hallelujah, to receive us unto himself. And we want to be righteous. We want to be a friend. We want to be an advocate. We do not want to be enemies, adversaries, wicked, or uh, a foe. We want to be the friends of Yahweh, and we want to be able to enter into Father Yahweh's kingdom, looking to Yahshua, Yahweh Shua, for the uh, who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. And as we do the things that Father Yahweh says to do, then we, hallelujah, will be able to be where Father Yahweh wants us to be. I praise Father Yahweh for all things in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Again, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you for allowing me into your home. Watch my YouTube channel under Pastor Beverly Gordon. I thank you for watching in the name of Yahshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.